Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shiva Tankamani, an Integration Technical Architect. Today in this video, I am going to present you about uh, Mule 4 basics, where we will be discussing about uh, how we can use variables between different flows, and how we can handle exceptions between different flows, and how we can access attributes such as uh, uh, HTTP headers and uh, query parameters uh, before and after transport barriers. Let's get started. So I have created a mule 4 flow already with some basic components in couple of different flows. One is flow 1, another one is flow 2. I have variables defined in both uh, and uh, flow 1 variable and uh, here we have uh, flow 2 variable so that we know uh, easily by if we see flow 1, the value is uh, defined in flow 1 and if it is flow 2, it's defined in the second flow. So I have uh, printed this query parameter that's coming from the uh, SOAP UI client in both flows. Here is the printing of query parameter here in flow 1 and here we have in flow 2. So this is basically uh, to identify how flow variables and query parameters are uh, being accessed in um, between flow invocations. And uh, in the second flow, I have a transport barrier, which is basically a, a second HTTP request to call external service. So this is introduced uh, to demonstrate uh, what is the change between uh, transport barriers. So in Mule 3, uh, the flow variables scope uh, are a bit complex because you have uh, different uh, uh, types of scope like uh, flow variable, session variable, record variable and uh, the access is different between flow, subflow and the transport barriers which makes things very complex. But in Mule 4 these are all very simplified where uh, all the variables can be accessed in all the flows because basically uh, variables are stored inside the um, a hash map in the message event. Now we are going to run this application and we are going to observe the values that get printed uh, one by one. So let's go back to the SOAP UI client and trigger this HTTP event with a simple payload uh, number and the divisor. And uh, we have the query parameter used here with the name operation whose value is division. So we triggered this and we got the response. Let's go back to the application and here is the console. So I'm going to explain in a simple term and uh, I we don't want to confuse you too much. So basically we are printing the flow variables in uh, first and the second flow. And finally, the most important thing is to uh, see how attributes behave in uh, the flows before and after the transport barriers. So you can see here we are printing the query parameters in the first one and the second one. Uh, especially the second flow utilization is after the transport flow of HTTP REST API call. So the outcome is very simple because in Mule 4 uh, the uh, structure of variables are very simple. All variables are stored under the uh, var, var's hash map. So they are all key value pa the pairs that are used throughout this flow. So you can see here uh, during flow 1 as well as in flow 2, the variables are intact. Which means even after the HTTP call, even after the HTTP call, after the transport barrier, the values are kept intact. So there is no confusions like uh, what uh, is available in Mule 3. Here Mule 4 is clean. But I, I do like to show you one different uh, um, which is similar in Mule 3 and Mule 4. F and we cannot see the query parameters uh, in, in the flow after the HTTP barrier. See, before the HTTP REST API call, the operation is displayed as division as expected, which is a query parameter. But after the transport barrier, it's uh, wiped out because basically the attributes are the uh, part of event under the uh, 
um, HTTP request. So the HTTP request carries all the headers, query parameters, etc. under the attributes. So the values are cleaned up and then substituted by the event created after uh, REST API call. So that's the one uh, to remember if you want to appear MUL4 certification or even if you want to know the basics of how flow variables work. Now let's switch our focus uh, from flow variables to error handling. So I have uh, uh, error handlers appearing in both flow 1 and flow 2. But uh, you can note down uh, we are going to make the error in flow 2. And flow 2 contains on error propagate. And in flow 1 we have on error continue. So uh, I would like you to pay attention here on uh, what's happening. When the error is raised in flow 2, the control is going to come here to on error propagate. And we are going to see uh, how the uh, payload is going to set between uh, flow 1 or flow 2 based on the error handlers. Let's, uh, uh, let's introduce this uh, error in flow 2. In order to do that, uh, I'm going to use rise error, which comes handy. It's, it's a, that way we can simulate the error in flow 2. Let's go back. Let's go to the content. And uh, we are going to introduce uh, a rise error in second flow. Now you can see here this is the rise error component. So while we run, the control is going to go in flow 1 and it's going to come to flow 2 and it flows across. And here the error is raised. And what is expected is what we are going to observe here and uh, uh, see what payload is going to be printed. In flow 2, we have flow 2 error. And in flow 1, we have main flow error. Let's see what we are going to get. So I have cleaned the logs. Let's go back to SOPY client. Give it. And we can see what's there. As you can see here, it's a main flow error. Although the error is raised in flow 2, where do we get this main flow error? Let's investigate. So we can note here the difference between uh, on error propagate and on error continue between the flows. So error happens here. The control comes to the error handler. And here it, uh, it's on error propagate. The set payload is uh, uh, set here as flow to error, but the error gets propagated to this error handler so uh, it comes to on error uh, uh, it comes to flow one error handling it comes here it goes to the set payload and there we have main flow error that's what is getting carried over here now how to contrast this and uh, handle your scenario in a different way let's see on error continue here and we will put this payload here and then remove on error propagate. Let me explain this uh, again. In flow 2, in the same way as we did before, we are going to raise error. The control is going to come to flow 2 error handler. In error handler, we have given on error continue, which means it's like a, a similar to try catch in Java. It's going to come to a catch block. And then it's going to continue from there. So there is no opportunity for this control to go back to flow 1 because it's handled here and then continue. As a result, we need to get uh, uh, flow 2 error in the SOAP UI client. Let's observe what's happening. Let's hit this. And you can see here flow 2 error. So this indicates uh, on error continue doesn't get the error propagated to the uh, calling flow and uh, the flow goes successfully uh, from this on error continue spot. Hope uh, you, you are clear in this video about uh, the basics of uh, variables in flow 1 and flow 2 and how to use attributes before and after the transport barrier and then how to handle the errors between multiple flows. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found this video useful and if you have felt so, please like the video and subscribe. I'll come up with another interesting topic soon. Thank you. Bye.